I was trying to think of uh, of what to call this show, and I was thinking of well, I'm altering these songs in the in the sense that I'm changing them so that alter a l t e r. But I'm I also feel that by doing these songs the way we do them, I'm I'm making them special again. I'm I'm paying attention to the words and how beautiful these words are, and we're actually. Giving them some spiritual、um, significance again, so in that sense, it's alter a l t a r, like we're creating a special mem- memorable place for them. So I kind of like that word altered as a, a new verb now or a new adjective rather. So it's been changed and it's been given some spiritual depth. Yeah, to some songs that kind of meh. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They, they lost it. They lost it from com- over commercialization. And then- oh, I would listen to them and just go, oh, God, turn these <laughs> off. You know, I'm, I'm just jing, 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 jing. And, and every recording artist has to put out a Christmas CD. And、yeah. they all sound the same to me. And they're in the malls. And I don't even hear them anymore. They're just、yeah. overdone. And so we started doing some of these songs,、um, Deck the Halls, for instance. And I might have you play that cut. Um, that's one of the, that is the first song I recorded of this style, and、um, I have it here. And、um, we started listening to the words, and it's, it's slow and it's in a minor key. So you slow down and you start to think about deck the halls and time to be jolly and don your gay apparel and troll the Utide Carols. <laughs> There's all of these things that are actually a bunch of chores. To do, if you think about it, what if you were a single housewife or a, raising a kid? Or there's a lot of work to do to get your house up to the standards that you think we need to have them up at, you know, according to the commercials. So, what if we sang the song from the standpoint of,、uh, of a, maybe a woman who's just a little tired <laughs> and she has all this work to do? So, suddenly the song, same lyrics, we, didn't, we don't change any lyrics. And suddenly you start to go, oh, that's a very interesting story now. So,、uh, shall we hear a little bit?、Just、sure, why don't you play that little, one while,、yeah. I, while you guys get tuned up? All right. All right. That would be Deck the Halls. Christmas. This is、uh, Deck the Halls with Janet Reutz doing the vocals, <laughs> Bob Burnett on the guitars,、uh, Kazzy Cutting doing the cooing and the crying, and Ron Wilson on the bass. <laughs>
Um, so this gives you a little bit of a feel of how these Christmas songs have been altered. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, it's got a little bit of a James Bond kind of oh. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that had that. Um, the, the cooing and the crying uh, credit in that song is that Janet, um, it's an old high school friend of mine, we went into the recording studio to record this, and she had just given birth, like maybe three weeks earlier, so she had a newborn. And the newborn was in the studio with us, and he started crying, and... Good old Noel Gott, an engineer here in town who's since passed away, he um, he stuck a mic on the baby and we recorded the crying and we put that in the song as a solo. And it just made the song so heart -wren <laughs> gut wrenching. It was just, it was so moving to hear this sad song with the baby crying in the background, which then even made it more evident that this was a mom raising a kid while trying to put the house together and. <laughs> It, and that's reality, I think, for some people. I think you're totally right. And we don't Wrong. all have money all the time, and we have that perfect clean house. You know, it's hard. It's hard. So, But at the same time, I listen to that song, and it makes me laugh so hard. Because <laughs> it's so absurd. Because it's so absurd. <laughs> and visually, I think, too, when you actually see Janet... You know, Sing her, the song? Yeah, I think theatrically, it, it's even more powerful. Just and the way she <laughs> executes the song. And again, uh, you will be able to see Janet uh, yeah, sing. Yes, will be there. Um, this December 8th at 8 o'clock at the Rio Theater. Um, Ron and Patty, do y'all do you, you, look like you're ready to play something there? We could do, an, uh, uh, we could do a song for you. All right, what are you going to do? I guess we'll figure it out. Yeah, I think you'll recognize this one.
holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace Jesus Lord at thy birth Jesus Lord at thy That was so beautiful. Wow. I think that is the most beautiful rendition of Silent Night I've ever heard. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Ron wow. Wilson, Thank Patty you, Maxine. Thank you, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. Your steel guitar playing oh. is just amazing, oh, Patty. Thank you. Thank you and, so much. Oh, my pleasure. Absolutely. And, and Ron, you... Um, you actually made this rendition. You, you, you're the composer. Yes, I uh, figured out the chords, and the way that goes is I'll, I'll look at a song and, and try to figure out the minor chords, and then I kind of decide, is this a funny song? And we have some funny songs, for sure. <laughs> Selena Gutierrez um, <laughs> is like, uh, has a million personalities, and she will create these wonderful characters. So we have some wonderful kind of rumba numbers that are just fantastic. I've got a mm. great band this year. Uh, Patty does a great I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus <laughs> that is one of my absolute favorites. <laughs> and it's just insane, literally. Oh, it's, yeah. it's just a intense song. Um, and so some songs, they'll get very quiet. And in this case, Silent Nights occurred to me that this is something maybe two or three people sing. At, it's dark, and it's quiet and it's very introspective and there's these moments of silence yeah. that that punctuate the the song that mm -hmm. really really help it it's <laughs> help bring the depth yeah when mm -hmm. i when i like i said when i first heard it last year i was just blown <laughs> away mm -hmm. and i was like how did i not hear about altered christmas <laughs> like in my office mate um Michael Horn was like, what do you mean you don't know? You better get your tickets. They're going to sell out. They sell <laughs> oh, out every year. Oh, Michael's great. <laughs> <laughs> and again, folks, it will sell out. Um, where can you buy it? At the Rio Theater? Um, Altered.com. A-L-T-A-R-E-D. Uh, Streetlight Records has tickets. And Tomboy, that new clothing store right next to the Rio Theater has them okay and then if you ever see me i have them on my you have them on I your have person them in my hat <laughs> at all times, all times. <laughs> um yeah so that's where you can get tickets and this is also going to be the last show of of this kind this year i want to take a break next year and reimagine how i could tell this story it's actually quite a story in my mind i have the mythology of this altered christmas and how these people came together and shared their stories and and came up with these songs so i have this whole uh, story about this fictional event that could have really happened <laughs> and then there's the fruit cake well, way yeah. back when way back when there was fruit cake yes so and uh people got to partake of the fruit cake <laughs> Well, yes. It, so um, you would share a fruitcake with the audience? Or? Well, the idea was originally this fictitious event, this party happened, and people got together and they each had a story. You know, they weren't so happy or um, they were <laughs> tired. And this fruitcake appeared at this party. Nobody knew where it came from. And they ate it. And it was the most fantastic fruitcake they've ever had. And most of the time, <laughs> people don't like fruitcake. Yeah. And it affected them. And they started to to hear things differently and sing things differently, and they found this joy and love after this fruitcake was shared. And so our first gig we had at the Cayuga Vault, we actually handed out fruitcake to everybody oh. as sort of a communion. They all partook mm. with us, so we all went to the same place together. And it was a... Uh, it was a really wonderful day. We can't do that at the Rio Theater. It's just no, too big. it's too big. Yeah. <laughs> too many people. 
And um, what I wanted to bring up was that um, part of the impetus to to create an altered Christmas is is to restore and redefine the holiday yes. that's been taken over by consumerism. Mm. That it's it's bye bye bye, and that's yeah. not not where Christmas began for sure. I mean, in the Christian sense, and then in in the spiritual sense, it's. It's been kind of yeah, and how much to buy? It always seems like oh, how much do you love somebody? Is it fifty dollars of love, or a hundred dollars, or a thousand? And it's ridiculous, you know. It, you should get what you can afford and what means something to somebody, and um, that should be what we're ex- encouraging people to do. Yeah. And um, I was talking to um, um, one of my favorite restaurants here in town is the Crepe Place. And I was talking to the owners about how it's wonderful how we can encourage each other to shop local and in, and buy from our own stores of these wonderful, talented people we have in this town yes. who make great things. Yes, Let's help mm-hmm. them keep their business alive, and then we give something that's really meaningful and special. Yeah. Again, folks, if you want to buy your tickets um, to see more, uh, see the beautiful faces of the people that will be performing and the musicians, uh, altered, A-L-T-A-R-E-D dot com. And then also uh, Ron Wilson, R-H-A-N-W-I-L-S-O-N dot com. Um, uh, do you, we only have a couple more minutes. Do you, should we just talk about the wig? The oh, wig. yeah, the wig project. The, so, Patty <laughs> Maxine, um, and you're helping her also, yes, Ron. very much. Um, you are doing a living wig foundation. You have beautiful long hair. Thank you. And yes. <laughs> yes, you do. And you're going to cut it off. Well, eventually, eventually, I will cut it off. And that, that was part of what happened. People, you know, I would say, I'm going to cut my hair. I can't take it anymore. It's too long. It's too thick. It's too all that. <laughs> Don't cut it, don't cut it. So, you know, a lot of back and forth about that hair. And um, just in talking with different people, I decided why not make use of the hair while it's still on my head? Because one of the things I heard a lot was uh, locks of love. You can cut it off and you can, you know, donate it to locks of love. So not being ready to cut it, uh, I decided to do this project. And Ron and I came up with... A name, and um, <laughs> we just figured out, you know, Living Wig Foundation. And what happens is, uh, I have a professional Paul Schraub photo of me with my hair down, and uh, say if you, Nada, help would like found to, it. yes, help, help with the donation. That's right. The donation goes to Women Care, which is a local cancer support group. So, and Ron would take your photo of your face and Photoshop it on my hair. <laughs> And there are some amazing, m- amazing well, pictures on the website. On the website. It's mashups. worth a look just yeah, for yeah. fun. And, and the website is? It's probably easier to go to my website, which is? Yeah, pattymaxine.com. And it's easier that way to get to and the And then there's a big okay. button on there from pattymaxine.com. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big link button. I would love people just to look and, and see what's going on there. Well, thank you so much, Patty thank Maxine you. and Ron Wilson. Let's uh, do some jingle bells as our uh, <laughs> outro. Please stay right. tuned, everybody, for TIFF time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening and for coming up here, Ron and, and Maxine. Mostly welcome.